Greetings. My name is Darkwit. I have been a hypnotist since 2008, and I welcome you to my private study. Today, in celebration of Pride Month, I'd like to take you on a journey to better understand and appreciate yourself. It doesn't matter if you are a member of the LGBTQ community or just someone who's yet to come to terms with who they truly are inside, whatever that may be. This is for you. All I ask is that you keep an open mind and go on this journey with me. Now, find yourself a place to relax, such as a couch or a bed, somewhere where you can lie back, put on some headphones, and listen to a pleasant voice. I hope you're not in a car or anything that requires some kind of attention. Just take this opportunity to focus on my words and my direction. As we always begin, take a deep breath. Inhale through the nose. One, two, three. And exhale through the mouth. One, two, three. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. Exhale. As you do, your body begins to slide into a recovery state. Reminded that it has no obligation to get up and move about. If you feel the temptation to scratch an itch, you may do so. There is no requirement for you to remain completely still. What matters is that your attention gravitates away from the distractions of reality, such as birds outside, people milling about in your house if you have any people that live with you, or merely just the sound of traffic driving by. Remember, our thoughts are a bit of a chaotic stream of noises and voices and threads constantly poking and tugging at our attention demanding focus we don't need to tell them to be quiet instead we merely acknowledge their existence and allow them to slowly fade away we can simply accept that these noises are on the surface world and let them go just like watching traffic go by or watching water lap at the edge of a river as it lazily makes its way down to the sea. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to describe something for you, and you're going to follow along and enjoy every step of the way. There's never going to be a point where you can't pull yourself out of this. It's a casual acknowledgement that you can wake up at any time. You're simply choosing not to. And that's all this really is. The conscious decision to relax and let go. Nothing untoward will come of you if you simply take the opportunity to loosen your muscles and allow someone else to guide you for a while. That's why I'm here. I want you to imagine that you are staring at a safe. This safe is a nice closed off place that you've kept for yourself. On the conscious world, we have masks, we have societal expectations, cultural taboos that we maintain a respectful distance to the self that is deep within. I want you to imagine we're taking our fingers to the dial on the front of the safe. And very gently, we begin to move our fingertips, the cool metal 
transferring heat away from our hand into the safe as you hear the tick, tick, tick of each individual tick of each individual movement of the dial, the tumbler working effortlessly. The sound is akin to the precision of a Swiss watch, meticulously crafted to be impenetrable to those that wish to brute force their way in here, but instead we know the combination, and that's what matters. Tick, 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 tick. And gradually we come to the first number, ten. We begin to move it in the other direction, allowing the tumbler to carry on unabated. Merely guided by our fingertips, we let it glide with the very minuscule vibrations of the tick, tick, tick move from our fingertips up our arm and informing our minds that we are leading towards the next number. We don't need to know the number, merely that it's gliding by thanks to the smooth motion of our fingertips. Tick, tick, tick. And just like that, you hear another, you hear another, and the second combination comes on. Nine. We move in the other direction again but it's shorter this time, reminding us that we don't have to know the combination. We can feel it right on our fingertips. It won't open unless you desire it to. That's the trick about this safe. It doesn't open by merely knowing the numbers. It opens because you want it to, because you want to come here. And just like that, it opens up with a satisfying click, the safe unlocks, and you pull it open, eight. As the door opens, you pull out another box. This one is similar to the wrapping of a gift, a nice red bow on the top a sash wrapping around festive paper that closes off the box from the rest of the world. Whether or not you enjoy the catharsis of shredding it apart or delicately taking grip of your index finger and thumb against the bow and pulling it meticulously, it doesn't matter. What matters is that you open the wrapping at your leisure at your pace. Very good. Seven. The unwrapping to the package is done, and inside there appears to be an ornate jewelry box. There is a small lock on the jewelry box, one that you own the key to, Merely stick your fingers in and slowly turn to the right, clockwise, and you could hear a satisfying, complicated series of mechanisms moving inside the box, and it opens with a satisfying click. Six. We begin to open up the jewelry box, and there appears to be a spherical puzzle gold polished with indented grooves along the surface is the only thing that disrupts its smooth shape and circumference. When you turn it, it seems to only move certain portions of the sphere. It's a puzzle, but it's a puzzle that you are all too familiar with the solution for. And with a gradual motion, each one slowly begins to open the tumbler. Each one slowly opens up the tiny mechanisms that make this puzzle. The sphere clicks in another satisfying way, and it begins to open. 
five. Inside, there is a small wooden box with small glass insets, meticulously crafted, intricate in design. It's as if the little wooden pieces that make up this box help construct the infrastructure of this case. With a few slides of your fingers, delicate motions, you find yourself opening up, easing back. It's not a complicated thought. It's not something you have to think about. Merely play with your hands. Allow the tactile sensations of wood dance along your fingertips. Feel every little motion inform you of your progress. Switches, adjustments, a gentle twist, a push here, a pull there, and the box undoes. And inside that, four, there appears to be a key. The key itself is packaged up to look almost like a credit card, but you can see there are more indentations and grooves along the card, so that when you take your fingers and you twist the corner, adjust the side, pull at the middle, slide vertically, it takes on the shape of a proper key, flat, but an unlocking mechanism nonetheless. Three, the key is set, and you look deeper into that little box, and you could find what appears to be a locket. The locket has a small hole designed for an ornate key, one about the size of the one that you just built out of that card. You slowly move in to press against the hole. It slots in satisfyingly reminding you that there is a place for all of this and everything here is equipped just right so that everything goes the way it's supposed to be. Two. The locket opens. Whether it was shaped like a heart or a diamond or a spade or a dollar sign is irrelevant. What matters is that inside there is a small button shiny red and as you move your thumb along the surface of it it reminds you of the positive feelings associated with just pressing a button indulge yourself enjoy that tactile sensation feel yourself press down on the button imagine the texture of the sensation indenting into your thumb and with a slight dull thump that yields to your pressure and presses down on the button. One. You look up and you see a door. The door opens on its own because that's what the button in the locket does. The door opens and you can see a familiar space. It's a box made out of your favorite material. It could be made of mahogany, latex, steel. It could be even made out of something abstract. It could be made of clouds or made of fire. Something that you've never felt the rigidity for, but it is yours. It's your box. It's your space. It's your home. It opens inviting you to come inside so that we can spend a little time in there visualizing whatever we want. Zero. And now I'm going to count up to ten. And when I do, we're going to be in that box. Relaxed, at peace, and ready to experience all we have in mind for you today. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10. There we go. Completely relaxed, at peace, and feeling the gentle serenity of all the world's distractions far away. Very good. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to guide you through a visual experience. In this space, the subconscious, this is where memories go to settle, where dreams rattle about in our head, where all of our subconscious threads reside and remain. Some are lucky enough to dance off our tongue or stay at the forefront of our conscious minds for a little while, but the feelings I want you to experience today are ones so rarely observed. But to do that, I want to walk you through a bit of a visual experience. Now, for those of you who have a bit of a hard time visualizing, I want you to take a moment to acknowledge a little thread of logic. All of the impulses that you experience in life, from taste to touch, to sight and sound and smell, all of these things are tiny firings of microscopic neurons that pass through your body. Every wrinkle, every indentation, from the tips of your fingers, to the tips of your toes, to the back of your throat, to the space behind your eyelids. Every single piece of you transfers information to your brain to process as it wishes. For some, a gentle touch is soothing, feather light, the foreign presence of another hand on yours. It can be warm, or it can be indifferent. No different than when you put your own hand on your own arm. All of the things you experience, sight, sound, taste, touch, smell, all of it is merely data that's being processed by your mind. All of the visuals that you just imagined are not too different from the ones that you have in real life. Merely the delivery of them is just a bit different. Instead, I'm merely describing them to you, but similar to that transference of information, we can use our experiences of memory, of imagination, of extrapolation to fill in the gaps of those little sensations. We can use memory to inform us what it feels like to have our feet in the sand. We can use imagination to guess what it might feel like to brush our fingers along the surface of a snake if we've never met one. You're very smart. You're very imaginative. And with that, we can tap in to all of those imaginative processes to filter our expectations of the world into information that our body can see, feel, taste, hear, smell, all these little things. After all, it's just data, isn't it? So what I want you to do is imagine a series of pipes, like an aqueduct or a water treatment facility. Water comes in from different places, pumps into different areas, and eventually comes out to you. There's a pipe for sight, for sound, for taste, for touch, for scent. All of these pipes going into a large machine, but now, instead of the outside world, we're just only using a portion of that and replacing the rest with imagination, description, extrapolation, and a little bit of memory. It's a form of a lucid dream because, after all, it is just data. 
And with that, I'm going to count to 10. And I'm going to take you on a journey where you can find a place where you can be proud of yourself. Where you could be whoever you want to be. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. At first, the space you're in is of an empty white void. It seems to stretch on forever, but you look down and you can see that you are in your regular clothes. Your skin is the color that it was before. All the jewelry or lack thereof that you wear from watches to rings to necklaces are still present. The expectation of the self is here. It represents you, who you expect yourself to be. But off in the distance, there's a door that seems to open up. It doesn't have a frame, per se. Merely, it's an invitation for you to walk out. And when you walk out, you can see endless sky, merging seamlessly with endless ocean. The ocean is flat, completely flat, almost like a mirror. And across it, there is a very thin platform. It is white with silver trim, reminding you of ornate marble. There's somebody on the other side. She wears white, but you can distinctly see a layer of pink over her body. You can't quite make out the details other than the wide brim of her hat and the gentle sway of a tail. You slowly begin to walk out, and as you do, you realize that your feet no longer have the shoes that started with it. You look down, and you can see your feet warm against the cold marble. It actually feels rather pleasing. If you had been a little discomforted before, it seems to be less so now. As you walk, you could see that the water on either side of this platform, this road that seems to go on into the horizon, doesn't ripple or react to your movement. In fact, when you look over the side, you can see your reflection. You could see your human features. You can see your cheeks, your neck, your shoulders, chest, everything that makes you who you are. And whether or not you like this reflection as of this moment it's irrelevant it nearly is there's nothing good or bad about it it just is when you walk further towards this figure she turns around you never get a good look at her eyes she has them closed curved up a little bit cheerfully she has a cute smile on her face you could see that she's pink at least her skin is she is that of a bipedal rattlesnake. She's got a long tail with a shaker on the end. White sashes covering her body that seem to cascade down towards purple starlight as they near the floor. Thick rolls of cloth surround her neck and she has a very large floppy white hat with a pink stripe along the brim with a black triangle in the center. Underneath the brim of this floppy wizard's hat appears to be a galaxy, rippling slowly, endlessly, but she pulls out her crystal wand and she rests a hand on your shoulder and she welcomes you. This is a plane between consciousness between ideas, between self. As you look along the reflection that you see yourself with, she looks down and you can see that her reflection seems to reflect a kaleidoscope of possibilities. Sometimes she's a rabbit, sometimes she's human, sometimes she's an elf. 
Sometimes she's a series of geometric shapes. Other times she's an imposing dragon or a mural or a effigy of a statue of a god long forgotten from this plane from this time. Her name is Incanta, and she welcomes you on this journey with her. She's been waiting for a very long time, and what she's been waiting for is the opportunity to celebrate something truly worthy of a ceremony. And with that, she holds your hands and says, in order for us to do this, I want to take a plunge and I need you to come along with me. Being close to who we are, embracing who we are, takes just a hint of bravery. And with that, she leans back and falls into the water. But instead of it being water, there is no splash. She just falls through and ripples. You can see her floating underneath, but the reflection and the person underneath seems to fluctuate. It may be a little scary at first, but take the opportunity to plunge in. You can jump or you can dip your feet in one foot at a time. And as you do, you slide in and find yourself walking on a mirror platform. Starlight and reflections and prisms flicker through the ether and you're walking along right beside Encanta. She smiles and she waves her crystal wand and you can see thousands upon thousands of doors and windows and books opening up. And people begin to come through. Some are human, some are shapes, some are living furniture, some are wind-up toys, and some are paintings. And they begin to dance. Fireworks fill the air. Some people just living explosives, just peppering the sky with brilliant light. They cheer and they celebrate because you are here. Coming to terms with who you are, who you become, who you aim to be is a mysterious journey, but each time it is a celebration because who we are truly enriches the world around us. There may be different shades of similarity between you and others, and sometimes people cut from the same cloth can enrich the others, but what's truly wonderful is that you add to that. You are a unique experience. You may not agree with that, but the important thing about it is being able to have the opportunity to look and explore. You look down and you can see that the human shape that you had before has lost all of its color. You're a monochrome figure in this space, but that's okay. And Kanta waves her magic wand and she presents to you a pair of jewels slowly emerging from either of your palms. They're almost like mood ring stones, large enough so that if you closed your palms together, you'd hear the gentle clack, like the sound of pool marbles or of meditation balls. The colors ripple quietly with potential. And she invites you to think, to imagine. We don't have to be bound to any one form that we were presented with at birth. In this space, you could be a superhero or 
You could be a robot, or you could be a painting, or you can be a series of musical notes. There is no limitation. Allow yourself to flow. Maybe parts of you split off into multiple entities. Maybe you start to form a series of masks that you enjoy switching through. Life can be a masquerade ball, after all. As it were, as you take on whatever brilliant or abstract or monstrous form, it doesn't matter. It's you, no one else's. And that alone is what they cheer on, what they're here to celebrate. And after all the time of rearranging your arms, your legs, your chest, your body to take on the shape of whatever it is that you want, you're met with the sounds of cheers and celebration. Jovial music begins to play, and Encanta turns round and begins to march. A glorious parade in this wonderful scape. You look around and you can see that the walls and the ceilings and the floor are that of prisms. You see, when those colors extrapolate, the truth behind it isn't just merely a rainbow. It is a division of the self of taking the pure, untapped light that is within you and allowing to express the trillions of multitudes of colors and expression within you. The beautiful thing is that it is not one singular thing. What may be in your form now may not be what you were before. Perhaps when you were a child, you imagined yourself as a dinosaur or a lovely bird flying through the sky. When you became a teenager, you imagined yourself an idol, a rock star or a pop star, someone whose voice was cherished by all. Maybe when you got older, it becomes something else. What matters is that this is who you want to be, who you feel is yourself, aspects of yourself. An extrapolation of the various multitudes and intricacies that make you the you that you are proud to be and what all of us are here to celebrate for. Maybe a big aspect of yourself is defined by your favorite book or your favorite cartoon or your favorite movie and that's there too. You can be billions of brilliant colors, or you can just be one, much like myself. The celebration is reassuring, because all the people that are here have been in your journey before, and there's something exciting about it. Because this version of you is one untapped, undiscovered, brimming with potential, brimming with energy. And the only feeling that you need to embrace is the glee of that exploration. Feel the pride of being who you want to be in this space. Right now, this space, this celebration, this parade of personalities and personages is yours. Encanta drapes her arms around your shoulders or whatever you might call them as shoulders and laughs close by. She's been waiting for this opportunity to introduce this to you all her life because she is a traveler of joy. She is one that understood who she was many, many years ago. And the only desire she has inside her is to share that joy in all shapes and forms. And there's no fear anymore. There's no worry. You might feel the desire to move, 
Maybe you march, maybe you form colors, maybe you open your mouth and let music and words flow effortlessly. What matters is that it comes out because it's yours. This space is one of a jovial group, but it's also one of solitude. The people cheering you on, they don't need for it to be shown to the world. It's merely yours. You can express as much or as little as you like. A reserved expression does not imply a suppressed one. And as you make your way through this place, cheering on, enjoying the prismatic colors of people walking through these large glass pyramids and finding themselves split off into hundreds of possible versions of themselves. They don't feel like they've lost anything. They just look back and see themselves, truly themselves. And at the end of this road, at the end of this glass parade of self and pride, you see one last thing, one that you might not have seen or considered in this light before. You look back, and it looks back. Because at the end is a mirror. But the mirror reflects who you truly are. Whether or not that is the body that you are born with, or something so much more complex underneath, you realize that those feelings are one and the same. So if you wish to bring that aspect of yourself out into the conscious world, you have the power to. Perhaps for the 50th time in the day or for the first time in your life, the reflection looks at you and smiles and a weight seems to lift from you. And as Encanta stands by you, she looks at the reflection and looks at you, and she says, There you are. I'm truly glad you found yourself, because they've been looking for a very long time. Now, the celebration has been a wonderful one. There's been lots of delightful food. There's been wonderful music songs that you're familiar with and a couple that just flow in and out of your head like a passing traveler from another time. You are always welcome to come back here to imagine that version of yourself. I'm going to count to 10 and when I do, we're going to leave this space, but the reflection of yourself, your true self, is going to be hand in hand with you. Now this reflection can be just exactly what you look like in real life, or it can be that extrapolation of that identity you discovered when you came down here, or it can be something in between. You extend your hand and that other self does the same, inviting you to come back to the surface together understanding that who you are is a truly wonderful thing and no one here can take that away from you one two three four five six seven eight nine Ten, awaken. I truly hope you had a wonderful time. I understand that the abstract articulations might get a little confusing, but I spent a great deal of my life refusing to accept who I truly was. And it wasn't until that I finally embraced those aspects of myself that I started to go towards being the best version of myself that I wanted to be. 
and I wanted to share that with you today. Happy Pride Month. Please take the time to process this and maybe get in contact with a loved one. You deserve it. Thank you for listening.